Southern Classic Media. The best station that plays you nothing but the best music. God expels every shade of darkness in their lives. Yes, it is the finger of God that makes the impossible possible. It is through Jesus Christ that we have complete victory. But there can be no victory without war. The war is not against flesh and blood, but against demons of all ranks. As the light of God exposes the satanic agents in this man, let us watch and see how the epic battle takes place. Come on. Who are you? Ah. The man of God touches him and he is set free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, that was ha what happened last week here in the Synagogue Church of All Nations when our brother received his deliverance during the prayer line as Prophet T.B. Joshua ministered. And we want to listen to him right now. We want to inform everyone that the confession you're about to listen to may, may be a shock to many people, but we're saying this to the shame of the devil and to the glory of God. And there are many important lessons that we will learn from his experiences. So we want to listen to our brother right now to share with us what Jesus Christ has done in his life. So, brother, you're very welcome. Please introduce yourself to us and tell us your name and where you're from. Well, uh, my name's uh, Mr. Jonas Mwanza. I'm from Zambia. I'm 24 years old. Yeah. Well, I came to just give God the glory for, the, for my deliverance and to also, I mean, to, to, conf to make a confession the same. Well, it was last Sunday, I was in the prayer line, and then the man of God located me and delayed his hands on me. And from that time, I didn't know what happened, but to the, from the look of things, it's like I manifested. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to start by telling the world to say many people don't believe when they hear the term satanism. But I want to challenge you to say that's real and uh, you have to be very careful about that. I say that because I was, I mean, I was part of it, I mean full time part of it, uh, nine months ago. Yeah, and that's the main problem that, I, that brought me here to the Synagogue Church of One Nations. Okay, brother, so can you just describe to us how all of this began, how it started? Well, uh, it all started when I was in the secondary, when I was in the secondary school seven years ago, where I, I was in the boarding school. I went to the boarding school because I'm from the Christian background. So I went to the boarding school where I met my friend. And that friend of mine was, uh, because in the school, in the boarding school, there was a group called Brotherhood. You know, it was a group of uh, students, about 16 students. And my best friend was part of that group. So, I mean, he introduced me to that group. I didn't know what that group was all about. So I joined that group and... Uh, well, what, what really attracted you to those group of students within the boarding school? Well, uh, are they, I mean, I was attracted because all the people in that group, I mean, the group was, uh, all the guys were quite, I mean, were quite rich and, uh, you know, they always had their latest designs of, when you talk of clothes, I mean, the group was well respected in campus, so, I mean, I was very much interested to join. And when I joined, I also became one of the important, I mean, persons in the campus. So after that, uh, I was taken to one of their meetings because they usually had, yeah, they usually had meetings, especially on Wednesdays, yeah, in the evening. So I was taken to one of the meetings. In the, uh, that was my first time. Now, when I was taken to that meeting, they asked me to, I mean, they, they took they took my blood from my from my la from my left hand. And then they drop, they, they had to, they drop the, one drop of, blood, of my blood in the, in the glass, in the glass. And after that, they asked me to, to drink half of that, because they, they was, in the glass there was quite, there was more like a juice. So when they poured my blood there, they asked me to drink from the, from the same glass. I, they asked me to drink half of the juice, and the other half they shared all of them. 
So after that, the meeting was over, and uh, I went to sleep, you know, after prep, we used to have prep down, uh, we used to have prep time in school, so I went to sleep. After sleeping, I, I saw my, myself moving out of my body, you know what I mean? I, get, I, I had to move out of my body, and I was looking at my body, and I moved out of my body, I, I had to find myself in the grave. When I found myself in the grave... I, okay, brother, we just want to understand, so after you had been initiated physically by taking your blood and drinking it as part of this group in school, that night when you were sleeping, you suddenly saw your, your, yourself leave your body. You mean your, your spirit left your body, but you were seeing your body sleeping on the, on the, on the bed? Of course, yes. And where, where did you find yourself going to? Yeah, I just found myself in the grave, and I found a, a, quite a number of people there singing and, uh, you know, dancing. And they, they welcomed me, all of them, and they said, you are welcome. And after that, they told me to, to follow one man. I didn't know that man, but I just followed him. So when I was following him, I mean, he gave me a plate of meat, and he asked me to, to eat all. So I had to take it all. And after that, they, he brought me back to the group. And they give me a white, uh, I mean, they give me a black gown and uh, a red scarf. By the way, I found them where I, all of them they were wearing black gowns and uh, red scarf. And they also gave me the same brown, uh, black gown and uh, red scarf. So after that, I had to go back to my body and I woke up. That was in the morning. So, uh, I mean, I went back to my friend and I asked him, because that was not a dream. It was just like it was happening to me. So I, when I opened my wardrobe, to, to, to take my uniform and some of my clothes, I had to find that uh, black garment and the red scarf inside. So, so the, the, the items you were given spiritually as part of that trance when you were taken to the graveyard, you discovered them physically in your wardrobe the following morning? Exactly, yeah. So from that time, uh, what happened was, uh, after I, I discovered those things, I mean, I had no option then to take them. Because I was, it's like I was already part of them and they were my friends, so I had no option. Because they said that you should not, tell, you should not say to anybody. So I took that and uh, when I went to my suitcase, I opened my suitcase, I found a brown, uh, I mean a brown envelope on top of my clothes. Uh, so when I opened that brown envelope, I found, uh, that was about, it was quite a lot of money, I found some money there. And then the letter, and, and uh, after I discovered the money, there was also a letter to say, that money I should not use, I should distribute to, I mean, to people just to give anyone I feel like giving. So, I mean, from that time, I, I proceeded, I, I did likewise. That's how I started from that time, yeah. Okay, so this money that you found in your suitcase after this initiation, what, what was it for? The people that you gave it to, what, what happened to them, and what was the purpose of, of you giving out this, this uh, demonic money? In the first place, I didn't know the meaning of me distributing the money, but later I came to, to find out. Uh, it was like, when whoever gets that money, I mean, we will be using him blindly to our kingdom. It will be like he will be in blind Satanism. That's what they call it, sir. So, so you'll be able to manipulate and use anyone that you, you gave this gift of money to? We can either use his face or use his body at any time, yes, sir. Okay. So now we want you to, to continue. How did this graduate uh, as, as you, you, you discovered more about the kingdom that you had got yourself involved in? How did this graduate to the point where you were given assignments? Well, uh, when we completed, you know, we completed our secondary school, and I mean, that was about time to go to university now. So, I mean, my level, as my level, my level was reason I was quite promoted, yeah, because of the things I did. I, I was promoted, I was given another rank. So, I started finding myself appearing under the sea. That's where I met a lot of people. There were a crowd of people. I mean, there are a lot of departments. You find that people, they are... There are factories where they manufacture clothes, I mean, air, lotion, and those sorts of things. And myself, they told me that you'll be, I mean, I'll be the section they took me to. That was the destruction section. Yeah, and they gave me about two marks. One mark, uh, they gave me triple six on my chest, and uh, the other symbol that we used to have on our left hand. Yeah, from that time, I mean, we started operating likewise, and we are given the assignments to say, you know, under destruction, a lot of things used to happen. The devil used us uh, in so many things, I mean, to, to destroy a lot of people and uh, cause confusion all over, the, all over the globe, I can say. Okay, now specifically on your own part, what was the assignment that you were given in that area of destruction? And how did you go about carrying out that assignment? Well, as for me, as for me and my three friends, and my three friends were about four, 
uh, my assign our assignment was just I mean especially to initiate women through I mean through sexual intercourse and uh, buying the monastery presents because we used to have uh, plenty plenty of money and uh, sometimes when we were asked to make quite a number of sacrifices there are also means of uh, using charms to cause more like accident sure sir so your own assignments were to initiate women and also to cause accidents. Now in the area of women, how would you go about it? What, which areas would you go to and how would you go about uh, affecting these women's lives negatively? Uh, um, mostly because we, we, were given, I mean, we were given good vehicles. So we used to target, most of the, um, we used to target hotels and uh, nightclubs. Whereby when you reach at a nightclub, I mean, you, you can, because of money, you can do anything. You buy presents, you can buy for them beers, you can do anything. By so doing, you try to, uh, until you just accomplish your mission. Yeah. So you would go to the nightclubs, buy drinks, things for, for those women, and what would eventually happen to them, uh, the women after you'd met with them, or you'd slept with them, or given them these gifts? What would happen to their lives? It would depend on the kind of assignment you have been asked to carry on that day. If it's uh, if something that has to do with sexual intercourse, or if it's something that has just to do with giving presents, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And those women concerned, what would actually happen to them after you had accomplished that assignment? Well, others were used uh, in many ways. Others were, other in, others, they, I mean, we used to plant demons in others, whereby if she's married or maybe she gets married, I mean, she'll be just destroying men everywhere she goes. And uh, others, I mean, so many things used to happen to them. Okay, so once again, brethren, we're, we're listening to this confession, to the shame of Satan, because it was the devil that was using our brother in the past to perpetrate all of these atrocities. Um, you also talked about the issue of accidents. Now, how would you go about that if you were given an assignment to cause an accident? Well, that was just simple, because uh, they, used to, they, used, they used to prepare something like a charm, like powder form, like the way flower looks like. Whereby when they give you that, you can go in any big bus, I mean, you, you can buy a ticket there, as if you're traveling somewhere. You, then when you enter into the bus, you sit on your seat, and uh, they give you a seat. You sit down, and you leave the charm there, and you get out, you pretend as if you are answering a phone. Or maybe you are busy, and then you just move out like that. And uh, what will happen is that, uh, I mean, the bus can, it will turn off on its way, or if it's not that day, it will have an accident maybe on coming back and uh, so at least uh, not um, at least maybe quite a number of people will be acclaimed yeah okay now in the midst of, of all of this when when you had these uh, powers within you what, what were the powers you realized that you had for example was there a specific part of your body where you realized you had these demonic powers um, and how would you you operate with them According to what they are saying, they, they, I mean, they, they, they had to put, the, uh, we had powers in our eyes, just in, the, uh, in our eyes, yes, and in our eyes, they were in our eyes and in, in our left hand, on our left hand, on the mark. Yeah. Okay. So how would you use those powers if you needed to in the course of your operation? How would you go about it? They said that when you are challenged, when you are somewhere and you find, uh, you discover there is some power which you don't know, you find that there is some more like strange power. You just touch on the mark on your left hand, and then you will be connected to them under the sea, and they will come and help you. Yeah, in the eyes, that was the most dangerous part, because in the eyes, those powers in the eyes used to wake at any time. I give an example, maybe if someone frustrates me and I look at him, the first thing that I will think, that the first thing that will happen to him. So because of that power in your eyes, uh, if you look at someone with anger and you curse that person, it, it would come to pass. Yeah, to come to pass, sure. Okay, now because of this power in your eye, as you were moving around in the public, would you be able to identify people that are also part of that kingdom? Or also, for example, if you saw genuine born-again Christians, uh, would you be able to see them and how, how would you react whenever you saw such people? According to the, I mean, about six, six years and some months I've served in that kingdom, I, I can say we used to know each other. Even if you are in town, I mean, we used to greet each other because we used to make the same sign and we used to know each other by the third eye on, uh, on our forehead. So we used to know each other. We used to know each other. I mean, we can greet each other because 
the, we are only allowed maybe when we meet not to stop just to greet each other and pass yeah yeah but when when you are walking and you see because i mean what can i say in town let, let me give an example of maybe you are in town where there are a lot of people people are passing you know you can see if your colleague you are, in, you are from the same kingdom you can see him by uh, third eye but if you see someone who is christians we we normally used to know them by uh the the person at their background because they never used to walk alone they were walking with someone whom we didn't know by that time yeah so if you saw a genuine christian you would see people around them protecting them guiding them now not even many people you see you know him i mean you know him or her by a person just one person on his back yeah and if you tried to attack such a person what would happen no, you can't even try to attack because those people we used to see with strange people guiding them, they, it was difficult for us to attack. Yeah. Okay, so, so our, our brother is talking from what his experiences were in life uh, before he received his deliverance here at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. And brother, can you just explain to us how uh, was it that you came to seek deliverance uh, in the midst of all of this, what, what, what actually brought you to the point where you needed to come to a place like the Synagogue Church of All Nations to seek deliverance? Well, what happened was uh, the origin of my problems was uh, when they... Because, you know, to that kingdom they don't appreciate, those people they don't appreciate. Despite of us uh, working for them for so long and doing whatever they asked us to do, as for me, they still, they still asked us to, I mean, to make sacrifice of our... Of, of, like, for myself. They asked me to, to make sacrifice of my, my own parents, you know. So it was quite difficult for me, so I, I had to negotiate with him. And uh, the one whom we used to call our master, he told me that I'm very stubborn, so he, he, he had to, to, to refer me to the high office. When I went to the high office, I, they had to tell me that we're going to discipline you because whatever we say here, whatever we say here, you have to do it. Most of our, your friends have done it, and they told me to say, have you seen? Because quite a lot, they gave us a lot of money. But I said that, no, no problem. If it means returning, returning what I've given me, I can return. And I returned whatever they gave me. I returned the, I returned the vehicle and returned the, the money. But it's like they didn't accept. So there were arguments over there. And we were about the three of us. So we quitted from them. And uh, uh, Lucifer said that you will kill us. He said that you, are, we are, uh, to, you young boys, you are very, he used the term to say that you young boys, you are very stubborn. And the, then he blowed us with cold air to say that uh, when you go to the earth, you are going to suffer. After you suffer, you come back to me. So from that time, everything, everything crumbled myself. I was in the university. They, I mean, they suspended me for no reason. Everything crumbled. But I never minded because I knew that this is what I've started reaping what I saw. So I didn't worry about anything. So it was at this point that you started seeking for deliverance. Now tell us, what, where, what, what, what efforts have you made to receive deliverance before you came here? Yeah, in Zambia I've moved, I mean, in Zambia I've moved almost. I've jumped from one pastor to the other, one prophet to the other. They were failing to deliver me. Instead, it's, it was I who was delivering them. Because when they come to pray for me, I mean, they were running away. Some of them, they were being beaten by things which they can't see. So... So you mean that instead of you, them to deliver you, the spirit within you was delivering them? Sure, sir. Okay, so, okay, so how, how did the issue of coming to the synagogue church of all nations, tell us how that initially began. Yeah, that's where I'm coming from, sir. So now when all my hope was lost, because I believe all my hope was lost, and I said that uh, I didn't know that I would be delivered because I had a lot of things on myself, honestly speaking. I had a lot of things, and we, are, we have done a lot of, quite a number of evil things. So I said that maybe, I mean, I was just waiting to die because we quitted three of us and one of my friends has already died. The other friend of mine is on the wheelchair, has got stroke. I'm the only one remaining who is at least fit like this. So what happened was uh, I started thinking because I remembered one name, the name of, uh, this name of T.B. Joshua. I remembered one name, one man, one man and a woman made a mistake when making a presentation under the sea. Yeah, there is, there is what we call presentation forum uh, uh, time, where they were asked to make a presentation to, to speak who is troubling you in your operation. And then one woman stood up to say, uh, there is this man, T.B. Joshua. Now, when he mentioned the name T.B. Joshua under the sea, at, like, it is, things were like, things they shaked, things they shaked. So they told her to say...
They told her to say that you should not mention that name here. It's better you just describe the person because that person is very troublesome. You know what I mean? So when I remembered that, I said, and I heard from people because I was not a Christian, so I heard from people in Zambia talking about TB Josh, and I connected from what I heard under the sea. I said that this man maybe can be, I mean, this man has got power. Maybe this man is Jesus Christ, I don't know. So I, and that's what made okay, me... Okay, so because of the experience you had when you were part of that kingdom, you realized that Prophet TB Joshua was being used by Jesus Christ. He caused a lot of havoc and destruction in that kingdom of darkness. And that's what prompted you to, to think about coming here. 100 percent, sir, because I believed. I believe, because I used to know pastors who use charm. I used to know... Me, I, I was able to know a person who is using something that's not from God. That's why the power that this prophet has, it was quite different. That's, me, that's what made me to come here, because I knew there was no power under the sea like this one. So I knew that this is from God. So that's how I had to fly to Nigeria to get delivered. Well, we give glory to God that our brother made it uh, to the synagogue church for nation. Satan could not stop him from coming here. Now, just describe to us last week when you were in the church service, what happened? Well, I was standing, in the, I was standing in, on the prayer line, uh, as usual. So I was in the middle, and the man of God came, the prophet. The, same, yeah, the prophet came in the prayer line, and we were all standing. We were waiting for him to start delivering and healing us. So as he was saying, he was giving a word of encouragement, you know. Now, as he was moving, he was going to the first so that he can start delivering people. So he looked at me on his way, and he turned around to me, you know. He just turned around like that, suddenly turned and he followed me. So I wondered how did he follow me. So as I was trying to look, I wanted to use my, my eyes to look at him as he was coming close to me. Like it used to happen in Zambia when you look at a pastor like that. So as I was looking at him, what I saw was a very big light like a sun. And I fell down from that moment. I didn't know what happened. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So during the whole deliverance, you were completely unaware of what happened. All you saw was that blinding light. What I just remember, I just saw a, a, something like a sun. And the next thing was, I was asleep and I woke up. You know, and after waking up, I discovered that I was very light. I mean, and I had to feel that peace. And the other thing was my heart. You know, because my heart was very bitter. I was very wicked. But when I woke up, I had to feel as if I'm a human being. You know what I mean? Wow, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. This is indeed the power of deliverance. And brother, by God's grace, it's been one week now. Just tell us, what are the transformations in your life ever since this deliverance? Well, I've been, I mean, I've stopped because I used to hear a lot of voices in my ears. I used to see strange things. I used to, I mean, I, I never had peace because I used to see a lot of things. So from that time, I'm just free. I mean, I'm enjoying my peace. And I'm, I'm very much thankful. I give God the glory because of it. Yeah, I sleep well. I mean, I, no nightmares. I mean, I just sleep. When I close my eyes, I wake up. Just like that. Yeah. Wow, we give glory to God Almighty. We thank Jesus Christ. Let's put our hands together one more time for our Lord Jesus Christ. And brother, whilst you were receiving your deliverance here in Nigeria, tell us what actually happened back home in Zambia. Yeah, that's where I was coming, sir. Now, what happened on, on Friday was that... Uh, you know, when I was coming here, my friend, because my friend is paralyzed, the same friend I was telling you about, whom we were within the same secret, I uh, mean, no court. So, as I was being prayed for on the prayer line, because he told me that where you are going, my friend, even me, if, even if I'm sick like this, you, you are lucky, they failed to, to do anything to you, but you go and pray for me so that at least God can also secure my life. I said, no, I'll, I'll go and pray for you. So, he gave me the picture. But I didn't know how the picture, I lost the picture. So when I came here, and after my deliverance, on Friday, I'm talking about last, yeah, last week Friday, the mother and the family members called me to say that, uh, your friend, the time they were praying for me on the prayer line, like the, what the man of God does when he, I mean, he removes his hand to say, to pray with him on, the pray, uh, on television, uh, what? So my friend touched the screen. And from that moment, the following day, I'm telling you, this is the truth. My friend is now walking, he's not on the wheelchair. You know what I mean? Wow. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. We give all the glory to God Almighty and we thank Jesus Christ for what he has done in our brother's life. And brother, you have seen enough darkness. 
now Jesus Christ has brought you into the light. What is your advice to viewers around the world and those people present here uh, with all of your experiences in life? Well, uh, my, my advice to the people all over the world, all over the globe, is that uh, they should believe in God. They should trust in God. You know, uh, the, God is the, I mean, God provides solution, and this solution is everlasting. You know, Lucifer just gives, quite right, Lucifer can provide money, can provide everything, but it's for temporal. You know, God gives everlasting things, you know, so you just have to believe in him, to trust in him. And I'm also urging all believers all over the world and Christians to say that they should be very much careful. They should not be admiring things which they don't know where it's coming from. And they should be always prayerful and always put Christ first. Thank you. Amen. One more time, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ, for our brother who has been set free from the kingdom of darkness. Brother, we thank God for your life. We just want to encourage you to continue to stay close to Jesus Christ, make his word a standard for your life, and definitely the best is yet to come in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Tarvin Classic Media. The best station. The place you nothing but the best music.